Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Philip for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Whether you are worshiping with us online or are gathered here in person, we are grateful for your presence with us today. Uh, we are glad to have Chell back after a three-week absence. We've had a delightful string of guest musicians, but there's nothing quite like having our own minister of music back. Um, in uh, because staff keeps playing musical chairs. Stephen is now also out on vacation, so we're grateful to have Samantha running tech today for us as well. Eventually, we'll all be back on the same Sunday in one place, um, but we're grateful uh, for the support of others who fill in. Uh, if you are new to this community and have found us online or through any various ways, we invite you to get connected uh, by filling out our online Get Connected card, uh, which is uh, in the, the video, or the link is in the video description, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, and that's a way for us to get to know you, especially those of you we can't see uh, who may be worshiping with us online. Coming up this week, uh, it's a fairly normal week with our uh, Bible study programming at 9 a.m. We'll, ha we um, we'll have a group that meets in person here, uh, also with the option to join on Zoom. So that's Wednesday at 9. Our midweek glow worship uh, continues again this week at 6.45. That's a very short outdoor service. We met on the back patio over here last week. Uh, and so that's where we'll plan to meet again, uh, just for a very short service uh, of communion and a chance to be together in the middle of the week. And then following that, at 7.30, also on Wednesday night, will be the continuation of our Glow Exploration Group. Uh, we will be on week two of our Animate Bible series. And if you still want to drop in on that, you're welcome uh, to join us at any time. Uh, the the uh, sessions don't necessarily build on each other, declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. It is time for everyone's favorite time, our children's message. So I'm hoping, uh, and again, you're, you're not imagining things. There are no actual children in front, but you never know who's watching, and it's a message for all God's children. Um, so I'm hoping that you can still help me out with something today. Uh, in our, one of our Bible stories for today, Jesus is going to be talking with his disciples about what it means to be welcoming and to welcome other people. And so I was thinking about ways that uh, we might, if someone new came to our church, if we, how we might welcome them. So I have a few ideas. Um, so you have to pretend that you're, you're an usher or a greeter and you're at the front door and you spot someone new coming across the parking lot uh, and they're, they're very excited that they're coming to this new church and you see them and you just turn around and look the other way. Or when they come through the doors, you just, you just stare at them. Or maybe, maybe when they come up and you see them and they're about to come in and you're like, no, shoo, 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 and then you close the door and you run in the opposite direction. I don't think any of those things are very welcoming. So, I don't know, what, what are some ideas? If someone new came to our church, how might we welcome them? Say good morning. Smile, smile, introduce yourself maybe. Right, it works too when you say hi and introduce yourself. And maybe they say you could give them a bulletin so they can follow along with the service, especially if they're new and they don't know what to expect. Uh, or you might be able to give them, I can't forget my one prop, we have these lovely little St. Philip visitor gift bags uh, where we have, there's a St. Philip cookbook. Uh, we have a little devotional book uh, or the candles that they can light at home. Uh, so there's lots of great ways to be welcoming. And when we welcome other people, whether they've, they're brand new or they've been coming for years, we can welcome people who have been coming for years too. We remind them how much not only we care about them, but how much God cares about them and loves them too. Let's close with our prayer. Dear God, thank you for welcoming us all to worship today. Thank you for our ushers and greeters and for all of the people here who welcome us. Help us to welcome others too, so that everyone feels included and an important part of this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, 
Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. For those who have no regard for God, behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and self am selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about along the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If ever there was an early affirmation of my calling to pastoral ministry, it happened in the pews at St. John Vianney Catholic Church in Shelby Township, Michigan. Growing up bi-denominational, as I did, I was attending Mass that particular weekend with my grandparents at their home parish. Being quite young, I didn't fully understand much of what was going on during the service, and to be honest, it was quite long and boring. But at one point as the priest was praying, probably in an effort to amuse myself, I abruptly shouted out a rousing and precocious, Amen. All eyes turned to the young boy sitting with his grandparents, both of whom, mind you, were quite well known and active in their congregation. My grandma played guitar and helped lead the weekly prayer group. And my grandpa was a regular usher and a member of the Knights of Columbus chapter. I imagine embarrassed might be a good word to describe what they were feeling in that moment. Amen, I shouted from the pews, to which the priest, without missing a beat, instantly responded, that's right, as he smiled in my direction. Instead of making me feel like an interruption or a distraction, the priest did something remarkable by acknowledging me and making me feel included in the liturgy. That kind of welcome is so simple and yet so profound. Whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me. This is a a lesson in welcome and hospitality and who gets to be included in what Jesus is up to. Children have something to teach us about the kingdom of God if we let them. And it's not about filling our pews and membership roles with young families and young people. It's about being drawn into a deeper, more authentic relationship with God and with God's people. As theologian Debbie Thomas suggests, children show us what God's power is like. Think about that for a moment. Children are vulnerable and in some cultures, including Jesus' own, invisible. Children are dependent on those who are older and bigger and stronger than they are. In a word, children are less a symbol of power and more a symbol of powerlessness. This past week, the church commemorated Holy Cross Day a liturgical observance dating back to the 4th century that celebrates the triumph of the cross, as our worship commentaries say. But it's a peculiar thing to celebrate an instrument of torture and death, the ultimate symbol of powerlessness, as its victims succumbed to total vulnerability and humiliation at the hands of the all-powerful Roman Empire. But the central claim of Holy Cross Day is that the cross is precisely where God's power is, with the vulnerable and with the humiliated and the suffering, with the dying and the lonely and the afraid. God's power is paradoxically in powerlessness, as the cross itself becomes a subversive symbol of God's victory over death. To make space for that kind of powerlessness feels so counterintuitive, though. It doesn't make any sense. And yet Jesus, in lifting up a child, one of society's nobodies, makes intentional space for all who feel ignored, overlooked, rejected, lonely, cast aside, In this simple and profound act, Jesus acknowledges the powerless and says to them, you belong here. At St. Philip, we say that we are committed to fully including every children of God. It's right there in our mission statement. It's one of the things that attracted me to this community. When we make space for kids and their families, 
and their joyful noises in worship. And when we cross barriers of generational differences in faith formation learning, we begin to live into God's vision of an expansive welcome. That welcome has profound implications for those who look to us as a witness in our community. Does that welcome really include me? For the young transgender teen who questions or who struggles with living into who they are and questions their worth, for the parent of a child of color who worries if they'll make it home safely today, for the person who's lived alone since their spouse died and worries about becoming an invisible burden as they get older. That welcome is the kind of welcome we seek to embody as a community of faith because that is the kind of welcome that God wraps us into. It's a kind of welcome that doesn't make any sense. Where else can such a random assortment of folks from so many different walks of life find belonging and community together? It's a kind of welcome that doesn't make any sense, but one that makes all the difference. Thanks be to God that we have a God who welcomes imperfection, who embraces disruption and diversity, not as things to be avoided, but as reminders of the very nature of God. Thanks be to God that we have a God who calls us to God's self, who invites us to this table and sets a place for us, and who calls us all children.
made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions, that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for the nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And share that with one another. Peace be with you. as we continue to share peace with one another and those online as, as has been our practice to share peace um, through text message through those uh, through our to our friends neighbors family members uh, anyone that we can think of to share a little bit of peace in the world and I forgot um, as part of my announcements I looked this up um, it's a little late now but you can think about it for next week and maybe I'll remind you um, but I was reminded recently of the, um, the sign language signs for peace be with you, um, which is, I think, wonderfully appropriate for the age of social distancing when maybe we're not so comfortable shaking hands or hugging yet at this point. Um, so I am by no means a sign language teacher or expert, um, but I double checked the video and I think I've got this one down. So um, peace is actually two words uh, and it starts sort of like this uh, and it's, so it's becoming calm, peace. So becoming calm. And then with, is you take your thumbs and this is with or together, with you. So peace be with you. We'll maybe practice that next week. I was reminded of it and I started taking um, some ASL classes at another church. So um, I'm learning. Um, at this time, we take time to gather an offering for the mission of this congregation and for the wider church. As always, we give thanks for your continued generosity that supports the mission and ministries of this place as we also support the mission and ministries in the synod and in the wider church. 
If you have a physical offering to drop off, we have a plate in the narthex available. Otherwise, many of us do give online or by other ways as well. Ascribe to our God the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, before all that is, you were God. Outside all we know, you are God. After all is finished, you will be God. Archangels sound the trumpets. Angels teach us their song. Saints pull us into your presence. And this is our song. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, you beyond the galaxies and you under the oceans, you inside the leaves and you pouring down rain, you giving us your image and you holding us in the night, your smile on Sarah and Abraham, your hand with Moses and Miriam, and your words through all the prophets. You lived with Jesus among us, healing and teaching, dying and rising, inviting us all to your feast. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we remember your Son, his life with the humble, his death among the wretched, his resurrection for us all, your wisdom our guide, your justice our strength, and your grace our path to rebirth. 
And so we cry mercy, mercy. And so we cry glory, glory. And so we cry blessing, blessing. Holy God, we beg for your spirit. Enliven this bread, awaken this body. Pour us out for each other. Transfigure our minds, ignite your church, nourish the life of the earth. Make us, while many, united. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive. And so we cry, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the earth shouts, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the earth pleads, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, our life, our mercy, our might, our table, our food, our server, our rainbow, our ark, our dove, our sovereign, our water, our wine, our light, our treasure, our tree, our way, our truth, our life. You, holy God, holy one, holy three, praise now, praise tomorrow, praise forever. And so we cry, Amen. Amen. With the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated at this time. At St. Philip, we extend a welcome to God's table. All are invited to this feast, including children as well as those who are worshiping with us online. As we've been doing, we'll gather at the altar rail to receive the bread and the wine. If you need a uh, gluten-free wafer, please uh, let me know, and we'll be sure to get that to you. And if you'd like communion brought to you in your seat, we'll be sure to do that for you at the end.
Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.